Okay. Okay. The, okay, Hannah, you can uh, start your presentation. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Hannah, the representative of University of Toronto. Time is yours, Hannah, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for inviting us and hosting this session. Welcome, everyone, to the presentation of the University of Toronto. Uh, my name is Hannah. I work for the university for some years, and I'm responsible for our activities in Indonesia. So I'm very happy to tell you today about um, our university and about the options, how to get here, about scholarships that um, we have. And yeah, we will uh, hope to answer all your questions. I'm here with my colleague, Leanne. Thank you for joining. Um, she's the contract coordinator for Indonesia and will also like take care of your, your uh, chats, uh, of your questions in the chat along the way. And we can also address them in the Q&A at the end. So what I yeah, just mentioned, I will present to the university, um, yeah, uh, talk to you about the research and the education that takes place at our institution. Um, I will um, inform you about the application procedure and the requirements and how to prepare to get here and how to finance. And with that, of course, we will also cover the scholarships. And um, also then I want to, to like tell you a bit about how is it uh, like to live in the Netherlands in the Netherlands about working, housing options, how are all these things um, um, yeah, organized. And we have time for questions, but please also already along the way, feel free to just drop them in the chat when they pop up. Maybe you can also let us know in the chat if you're like looking uh, for a bachelor study abroad or for a master study, then I know a bit if there's maybe like a, um, yeah, um, a big group looking for the one or the other. So um, just to make sure I cover everything. Let's get started about studying in the Netherlands. Well, maybe I'm not the first presentation that you're uh, attending today. Um, so you probably have heard about this already, but well, it's, well, first of all, nice to hear that you're um, considering coming to the Netherlands. I myself have also been an, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, an international student at this university. I come from Germany, so not that far away, right across the border. Because as you can see here, we are located in the city of Enschede. It's in the east of the Netherlands. Um, and it's really close to the German border. But uh, I also put here the Amsterdam airport for you on the map. So it's like two hours drive, um, but also for example, this Love International Airport in Germany, it's pretty close. Um, and yeah, why to come to the Netherlands? Um, in general, it's really centrally located in the continent of Europe. So it's really easy to, to reach. There's a good infrastructure. You're really quickly in, in other big cities uh, in Europe. Um, also, um, you will get along really well with English. So there's a really high proficiency of English um, among Dutch people. So when you arrive, you will have no difficulties getting uh, along and finding your, uh, finding your way. So it's a very approachable, warm country, um, um, and also one of the safest countries in the world, where you can yeah, have a good infrastructure and surroundings, community around you to to help you start, uh, yeah, your life at a different part in the world. And uh, yeah, that's also what I experienced when I when I came here and didn't know a word of Dutch, um, that it was very approachable and that it's a very yeah. Um, open culture and of course if you don't know yet you will uh, like also um, can, um, learn how to cycle when you arrive here you don't have to there are buses everywhere but um, that's like of course the thing to do like of all them I think more bicycles than people uh, in the Netherlands looking at our institution um, we are a research university um, and our core value, we call it high tech human touch. What we mean with that is that there's really a multidisciplinary education that combines as well technology with social sciences and their approaches. And by that also um, aiming for making impact on real world issues um, on, in society. When, by that we have, we offer really high quality education. We are ranked in the top uh, world uh, to 200. By the QS 198, and we have top ranked programs almost each year. Yeah, each year differs a bit which programs, um, and based also on uh, um, um, rank rankings that are 
based on the student uh, survey that is taken out each year where students give grades to their, to their own programs and just recently launched also for a master program again and they rank really high also an atmosphere. And I think that's something that um, yeah, is really um, important the, uh, um, for us at our university, the atmosphere, the personal guidance, um, supporting each other, um, working on things together. And that's something that you will also encounter when you're, when you're a student here. So you will have study advisors that help you um, al along the way, or if you have any personal or uh, study related difficulties, um, you will have mentors for your thesis to, to, get you, uh, to get you up and running. There are um, student um, groups to, to help you along. And there, yeah, so many, many different um, places where you can, uh, can get support. Then we have a, um, a big campus on which all it's located. I will show you that later. I also have a video for you at the end uh, to yeah, give you a feeling of what to expect uh, when you come here. And uh, on this campus, there's a very active student community. So um, there are a lot of international students, I think around a third at the moment. And there are associations where the students, um, yeah, uh, yeah, get active and organize events, they organize gatherings, um, they have dinner together um, based on your interest, if it's sports or cultural, or if you want to get active on certain topics, um, then there's yeah, a variety of options to, to get active next to your studies. And also we're one of the most entrepreneurial universities by encouraging the students to really um, yeah, work on their own ideas. And there's, for, for example, also a startup hub on campus, Incubase, where students can get information about starting their own um, company, um, how to get funding. And there's yeah, a community and a, a network um, that can help you start um, making your, your ideas come true. To summarize, here's some of the facts. I think most of them I've, I've already covered. Um, so there are a lot of societies uh, uh, on campus. There's also an Indonesian uh, uh, student association. I think we have currently around 100 Indonesian students enrolled. Um, it's uh, quite a big group um, for at our university. So also there um, are options to get in contact with students um, that yeah have maybe similar experiences to you that can help you um, find your way uh, to start your life in the Netherlands. The University of Tenten in Indonesia have yeah, a long uh, history together and cooperation. I think my slides. So, oh, sorry, I jumped over one. That was one click too much. Well, there's a long cooperation between the UT and Indonesia. Um, well, there are currently a lot of students, but there's also a huge network of alumni by now, more than one and a half thousand. Um, there are partnerships with multiple universities. Um, with uh, scholarships, so I will show you that in detail uh, in a moment. Um, so if you there have any questions about it, or if you wonder if maybe uh, your current institution has a cooperation or so, please also ask us um, and then we can have a look together. On our campus, we have uh, several big research centers that are, yeah, um, participating in world renewal uh, union, union re research. Um, that's the Digital Society Institute, the Mesa Plus Institute, and the TechMed Center. And um, yeah, the UT is considered a technological and engineering-driven institution, um, but that does not mean that we only focus on these areas. What I mentioned, this multidisciplinary um, um, nature of our programs and also in the research means that there are like, crossovers between different areas also between researchers um, of different uh, faculties and uh, research institutes. And based on that, they yeah, combine efforts, they combine knowledge to, to work on these areas as mentioned here on the slides, but of course there are more. Mm. Also, there are um, yeah, numerous faculties um, that are uh, linked with uh, um, institutions like uh, the Fraunhofer Project Center, and um, if these values, like this approach, you will also uh, find back in your studies. 
So uh, the master programs, um, if you would study a master program at our university, then there will be also the option to write your thesis. So maybe in one of these uh, research groups and uh, contribute with your research already in, uh, in yeah, ongoing research office groups, for example. And all of that is um, yeah, happening in really modern facilities um, that students can make use of also during their studies. Of course, depending on your study on the project you work on, um, but then you might also be part of one of these. To give you a short glimpse of all the programs that we offer, uh, we have 20 bachelor programs, and those are um, almost all taught in English, like the blue, blue ones um, are all completely in English. Our bachelor programs take three years, and we, um, they range from yeah, social sciences, like we have communication science, business and um, uh, international business administration, but of course uh, the engineering um, engineering uh, topics like electrical engineering, maybe combined a bit more with the creative side like industrial design engineering um, or creative technology. Um, and of course, IT programs like we have technical computer science, but also business information technology, business, uh, bridging IT and business. Um, yeah, so if you if you would like to know a bit more about uh, one of these specific programs, um, I can uh, tell a bit more in the end, or I will also give you information how to deep dive in the next step. About our bachelors, we have a 20 education model. Our education model um, divides the three years in modules. So every uh, quarter of a year, um, you will cover different topics. And based on that, um, you have parallel like theoretical lectures, but you also work in group projects and you directly apply the theoretical knowledge that you just learned in, um, by building or um, some, pro uh, some project together with the group. So by that, you also learn a lot of skills, um, practical skills by cooperating with the other students. Everyone brings their own set of pre-knowledge, of course, and um, there are, that means that it's not only individual assignments, but of course they are there as well. So the first two um, modules are really core courses. And then after the first two years, uh, after that you have room to, um, yeah, to create a bit your own um, uh, schedule. So in the electives in the first part of year three, you can, for example, um, do an internship or you can go study abroad in a different country, a different system. Um, you can also choose to do a minor which means that you follow specific courses that are unrelated um, in the core to your um, bachelor that you're following at the moment. And you could also use that time to prepare for your master's. So if you notice along the way during your bachelor that maybe a different master would um, suit, um, yeah, suit you a bit better, um, that's still related, but yeah, maybe not completely, and you might be missing some pre-knowledge, um, and then you can take those courses in the third year to directly transfer afterwards into the master. And then the last part of your bachelor is writing an uh, actual research thesis. If you would follow a bachelor at our university, you can directly transfer afterwards into a master if you succeed successfully. Um, and there's a variety of masters to choose from. This is a, yeah, a list <laughs> of the current master programs that we have, but most of them have specializations. Some of them have even uh, up to 10 specializations. So there's a lot of opportunity to really, um, yeah, pick the way that you, uh, you foresee and the, um, um, what you want to de uh, develop. Um, those master programs are in the field of ICT, um, yeah, natural sciences, health sciences, um, many engineering programs, uh, spatial engineering programs, and society related programs. So, also e communication, uh, education, science, and technology. And those masters almost all take two years, besides the ones, the societal ones, those take one year. And um, yeah, so here also content wise, um, if you think there is something, um, if you now discover, oh, hey, I didn't know that uh, University of Twente was offering something in that direction, 
I invite you to have a look at our website. On there, it's really like a close description of the different specialization options, um, also cooperation options, maybe if you want to look for uh, study abroad um, or um, examples of research projects, uh, thesis projects of students. So I invite you to have a look there to deep dive into what does it actually, um, 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 what, do, what does it actually also lead to? What so are there examples of alumni uh, giving a, yeah, an expectation of where to go, uh, if, where you can go by studying this program. Then let's have a look at the practical side, um, um, application requirements and how to finance. So let's start with a summary. If you're looking for a bachelor program, and you have a National SMA diploma, then you will first need to follow a foundation year. Um, we offer that in collaboration with Twente Pathway College by Navitas, and they are located on our campus. So you would already um, start your study at our campus uh, for a year with them. And if you succeed, then you can transfer into the bachelor program. If you have an international diploma or you have an SMA, um, and on addition to that certain international um, certificates, then you uh, might be applicable for direct entry. And for the master, um, of course, you will need um, a bachelor diploma. I will go into the details of the requirements now, starting with the, with the bachelor. So here's an overview for direct entry um, of different international levels. Um, so if your pre-education had been in English, then you will also be exempted from the English language certificate. That's in most cases not needed. Uh, some of our programs have specific requirements like um, a certain pre-knowledge in physics or in chemistry, uh, depending on the program. So for almost all of the engineering programs, physics is one of the requirements and anyway, overall good math, uh, math grades. If you don't have an international um, diploma, then what just mentioned, you can uh, follow, uh, you can apply with Twente Pathway College um, or you can combine it with some extra IB certificates. For the master, it's always difficult to say on the spot if someone's eligible. It really depends on your pre-knowledge, on the profile you have, um, but overall, um, it's important that you have a, a content-wise relevant bachelor's degree so that it's yeah, related to the master that you want to attend. On the website, there are also details on pre-knowledge or classes that you should have taken before to, um, yeah, to fit the program. So you need this as one uh, degree. Uh, on top of that, we will ask uh, English proficiency um, certificate which can be the IELTS or TOEFL. And for the upcoming academic year, we also accept the IBT home edition test um, for the moment due to COVID that one was added as it's uh, yeah, more difficult to, to, uh, um, yeah, to attend um, physical tests. Um, and then also here for some masters, maybe specific uh, requirements apply. If you now think like, well, where to start? How do I know? if I'm applicable or not. The first step when applying to masters, always doing our eligibility check. We call it the e-check and you can find it on the individual program website. Um, and there you can like click through, fill in your pre-knowledge, your pre-education, and it will give you a first indication if you suit the profile of the master. Also here, this is an overview about how to apply um, and, but I also advise you, uh, well, we have some nice videos on YouTube explaining it step by step, but we also work together with partners in Indonesia that can help you through the process. If you would uh, like to get support in that, they can also help you uh, um, with, your, well, with your application, but also consultation in uh, how you're, uh, maybe what to study or if this is the right place for you to go. Um, so also today, um, Alina from Atlas is supporting us uh, in the chat. Please feel free to reach out. Um, in that sense, just to, uh, to explain this a bit shortly, there's a central um, um, application system in the Netherlands, Studylink, 
where you have to create a profile and upload your documents. And from there, you will get transferred to the University of Twente um, system. And then once you hand it in, um, we have an admission office that, yeah, of course, like looks at each um, file individually. And in case for masters, there's also um, an admission committee per study program, and they will look at all your all your um, files. And in case that you doubt if you are completely eligible, I would always recommend to just apply and to try. And um, also, if they think there's something missing, they will get in contact with you and to see um, um, if like wh what's the what's the matter and like if it maybe fits. Um, but of course, please first check like the general requirements that we have and do the uh, eligibility check on the website. Looking at deadlines, well, now we are February, so there's still some time to apply. The deadline is the 1st of May, um, with exceptions for some of our programs. Um, they are listed on the right. Um, exceptions are our two bachelor programs that have a numerous fixes, which are computer science and psychology. That deadline already passed. So there is no option anymore to apply for those for this summer. But of course, you can apply uh, once uh, the system is open again for next year. And the Master Geo Information Science and Earth Observation um, has, um, is a bit later. And um, uh, GMA is a bit earlier. So please, uh, in case there's someone here interested in one of those programs, please uh, keep that in mind. Um, after applying, um, well, it will be assessed, of course, and then you, if you are eligible and you get an offer, then there will be another deadline to accept the offer. It's important not to miss that one to save your spot. And then uh, the whole process will start that our visa office will guide you through um, yeah, the visa procedure to the financial um, um, part. And yeah, there will be strong guidance by University of Twente um, on what is needed. Looking at the financial part, what to expect actually um, at, um, as costs or well, here I listed the tuition fees for the upcoming intake moment. For the engineering um, programs, it's around a bit more than 16,000. Um, and for the um, non-engineering programs, so the social sciences that only take one year, it's a bit less. And on the right side, we um, yeah, have an estimation of costs of living, those 12,000 euros per year that are expected um, to be needed to cover all your living costs um, is also the amount that you would need to prove upfront that you're able to cover those for a year when you come to study. And that proving of financial means is part of the visa process. So um, after accepting your offer and the pre sale process is started, you will be asked to yeah, either um, provide a bank statement to show that you will be able to, uh, to fund your studies and your living, or that's also the point to otherwise show if you have a scholarship um, that that one will cover it. With that, we come to the scholarships. I think that's what we're waiting for. <laughs> um, I will show you, um, which kind of scholarships we have, and then I will invite you to have a look at all the details in uh, our website or to contact us also in the chat. We will be also available after this webinar um, for yeah until the end of the event to look at uh, uh, look into your individual cases. So um, there's a Holland scholarship available. Um, the first deadline just passed, but the second one's open until first of May. Um, for yeah, first years uh, for the first year of your, uh, of your study. It, this one is applicable for all masters and bachelors of the University of Twente. And to those of you looking for bachelors, let me already say that it's also the only one. There is almost no scholarships available to fund bachelor studies at our university. While for masters, there are plenty of options that we will go through now. And it really depends on like the, the study that you're looking for. Um, but also partially on um, geographics, like on what's your pre-education or experience. We have this University of Twente scholarship um, by the UT. And um, there is also 
same same deadline. So until 1st of May, you could still apply for that one. Um, it's applicable to all of the masters to yeah, give some extra funds to your study. Um, and yeah, you can also find the details for all those if you visit the scholarship finder, which I put here in the slides. Um, there you can insert your nationality, your level of study that you want to pursue, and also the program of your interest. And then it will give you a list of all the possible grants. Um, all of them also have a bit different requirements. For some, you already need to have your acceptance letter. For some, it's also okay if you are conditionally accepted, which means that you maybe still have to provide your final diploma. But if you're conditionally accepted, that's enough to start your application for the scholarship. So please also do so. It's always good to start as early as possible as, yeah, as you can. Mm. Then we have um, the scholarship of LPDP. And the deadline is, uh, or it's not known yet exactly when it will start as far as I'm aware, but it should uh, open up soon in the next one, two months. Um, last year, it was applicable to all our masters based on certain conditions on where you live in Indonesia, what's your, um, yeah, what's your profession at the moment or your pre-education. And um, it was applicable to all of our ITC master programs like the information science, um, so that's something to look at uh, then once it's open again, which should be soon. So um, then next to that, we uh, have the student scholarship available. Also here, it should uh, open up and put your deadline March, but that's not uh, correct. It should open up somewhere soon. The exact dates also not known at this moment. That one is also applicable to several of our master programs and covers uh, tuition fees, living allowance, insurance, so in case you're interested in one of those masters as listed here, keep an eye on that one. Then the ASAT scholarship for the environmental related programs, um, deadline in April. So there's also still a bit of time, but in case you haven't rounded off your application uh, yet, but do so as soon as possible. Then an uh, other scholarship we have for by, um, um, by the Ministry of Communication and Informatics, which is a full scholarship plus an extra tuition fee waiver by the UT. Um, it applies to five of our, um, or four of our master programs, business information technology, communication science, computer science, interaction technology, and philosoph philosophy of science, technology, and society. Deadline is approaching in about a month. Um, Highly recommend to look at it if you're for one of those programs as it covers really the whole study, uh, the whole, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a full scholarship. Then the OTS, we got a lot of questions about that. Also big scholarship, we have one available for whole Indonesia, but nevertheless, um, please look at the requirements. And if you see there, please try. And it's also, you know, you can apply to several scholarships. And also for some scholarships, it's possible to combine those. So for example, the Holland and the UT, uh, uh, the University of Trento scholarship that I told you in the beginning, apply to both and like see um, if you, in case you would get both, you could also combine them. And there's the OKP uh, scholarships for um, the one-year masters, but also for um, geoinformation science and special engineering, their support. And this is the last slide about scholarships. Um, summarizing a bit what's available for our ICC faculty. And there are plenty of um, options of co-funding, of a loan scheme, of, of, uh, um, pro, uh, of yeah, financial support. So um, that really depends on your individual situation, on the program you look forward to, but also here deadline uh, 1st of April. So yeah, also here I invite you to have a look or also approach us later in the chat so that we can have a look um, together. With that, I'll round off the scholarship part. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I don't see the chat, like if um, we have already placed the link, but maybe that's otherwise an idea then um, everyone can have a look for themselves as well, which of the scholarship is applicable to your situation that you look at.
But then I want to um, bring you a bit more to the smoother part of uh, if you then decide to come and you have the means to come, what can you expect when coming to Enschede and study here? Um, well, Enschede is, as I showed you in the beginning on the map in the east of the Netherlands, still really well connected to all the big cities like Amsterdam, two hours by train. Um, but here for, in the region, it's one of the biggest cities while still being sort of cozy and small, I think like 160,000, 70,000 people. Um, and out of those, a lot of students. As next to our university, there's also the University of Applied Science and an art school. So there's a lot of um, a life and things to do of, with young people. Um, but also on our campus, there's a lot of options to do sports. There's a theater. Um, and in the city, there's room for shopping, for, for going out for dinner, for, for drinks. And um, yeah, so there's a, a lot of um, options to do. And I have a movie of one of our students showing you around in the city that I would like to show for the next two, three uh, uh, minutes. So you get a first impression on how the city actually looks like. Hello and welcome to Enschede, a high-tech city with over 25,000 students. This is the main shopping area um, where there's a variety of different shops, shoe shops, clothes shops, decoration, so you can find pretty much everything on one street. Enschede not only has four cinemas, but also lots of theatres where uh, we can go and watch modern pieces, musicals, theatre pieces and just enjoy a nice evening out. And there's lots of events here as well, like throughout the summertime there's lots of festivals uh, in the city centre. Go and enjoy music or um, there's a food festival, so there's literally for everybody something. This is the marketplace here in Enschede. Um, it's on Tuesdays and Saturdays. It's really cheap. Um, students often come here to save money. By the vegetables. Enschede offers a variety of different cafes and restaurants like Turkish, like Libanese, or sushi, and Greek, or Mexican, and many more. Lots of restaurants offer different uh, dishes for every day. So uh, the dish of the day on a Monday could be pasta and then the dish of the day for the Tuesday could be pizza. This is the dish of the day. It changes daily, but it's super cheap, but also super good. There are multiple locations here in the city center where you can go out and party. But I also enjoy the peace and quietness here at the park. Enschede is located in the eastern part of the Netherlands. We have two train stations here, which not only connect us to Amsterdam in like two hours, but also to the rest of Europe. I traveled uh, many times to Amsterdam for day trips, but also to The Hague, just to get a general uh, idea of the Netherlands as well. I mean, you can do day trips from here, leave early in the morning and then come back uh, late at night because the trains run um, till midnight or even later. From the city center, it only takes uh, 15 minutes by bike to travel to the UT campus. Cycling in the Netherlands it's much safer because here we have the red uh, colored cycling lanes. They separate the bicycle path from the car so it makes it that for uh, much easier and safer to travel on our bikes. Like I was quite surprised and happy that I've decided to come to Enschede. Once I moved here I realized how many uh, opportunities the city has like different um, cultural things, but also restaurants, um, cafes. You don't have to go specifically to another city to have like the, the normal life. So this to give you a first impression of the city. 
Um, and I think what I didn't cover before was the housing part. So um, when I wanted to add that, there are a lot of students living in the city center. Um, there's also an international student hotel. Um, also many students live on campus. It's quite a variety. Um, but as a visa student, uh, we have a special offer for first year students. So once you apply, you, you will uh, yeah, receive one offer by us for a room that you can uh, rent out for the first year. So in that sense, you will be covered. And then once you arrive um, along that year, you can uh, start looking for a new room uh, for your second year so that new first years can, uh, can get those guaranteed rooms. Um, I wanted to add that to the housing part. And then looking at work and studying. Uh, so it is possible to work next to your study, but side jobs are limited. So you are allowed to, to work 16 hours a week or during three summers, uh, three, <laughs> three months during the summer um, uh, because you will need a work permit and full medical insurance. And that will be um, yeah, arranged by your uh, employer then. For example, if you work for our university, a student assistant, tutor, something um, that will need to be arranged. Um, but yeah, it is limited also due to uh, uh, language uh, um, barriers, possibly, depending on which sector you want to work in. Then after your graduation, there will be an option to apply for an orientation year, a search year visa, so to, to stay for a year longer in the Netherlands to, to search for a job. Um, but also there, depending on your studies, um, yeah, that uh, uh, there will be also support and you might have options to already um, um, yeah, get in contact with companies during your, uh, during your studies. And there are um, yeah, several uh, opportunities during how it's supported to um, start your career. So there are, for example, the 20 business days that are organized by students for students. Um, where each year companies uh, come to visit, or if it's online, then you can have online chats, of course, to find internships, but also to find maybe a thesis, uh, like companies to cooperate for with your, for your thesis project or to find a job afterwards. Um, then there's Incubase, uh, the, um, yeah, an incubator founded by, by students, Novelty and the University of Twente. Um, with a mission to facilitate and support entre the entrepreneurial students um, on campus. So you can uh, go there if you have an innovative business idea and get support on where, how to start. Um, and then of course, also the programs have contacts to, to industry like for, for projects or for thesis, depending on what you're, what you're looking for and on the options in that program. Um, there are study associations by each program. So students that maybe organize company days, but also um, maybe organize something with meeting up with alumni. So there are plenty of options. And there is a career service center um, by the UT that can also help you like figure out what we actually want and how to make the next step. And all that lead by now to, yeah, more than 50,000, I can say. That's uh, obvious, I think, one to three years old. but. Uh, a lot of uh, alumni from all over the world. And you can see also uh, many from Indonesia. The number is also higher right now. Um, and they work, for example, at these companies mentioned here. Um, also, for example, Booking.com and Takeaway.com have been founded by students um, from the UT. And uh, yeah, so over the years, there's been built up a large network of alumni also from Indonesia. Um, that you can make use of. I'm getting to the end of the official presentation part. Um, I would like to already uh, mention some options on how to get more information after today, but of course we're not done yet. Like we will go through, we will address now the questions from the chat. Um, and of course we're here this weekend, also tomorrow to answer your questions in the one-on-one -on -one chats of the platform. Um, but to give you already some, um, um, tips on how to get more, more information, maybe also afterwards, let the, all the information sink in that you get a list this weekend for next steps. There will, um, well, we have an um, Indonesian student ambassador, her name is Haini, and she yeah, 
helps also uh, prospective students answering their questions, concerns, um, if they want to get in contact with an Indonesian student, you can reach out to her via Facebook. Then we have also a uh, website in Bahasa with more uh, further information, also with brochures, you can download them there. Um, and then if you know, well, I'm interested in a certain program, but I would like to know firsthand, what is it like? Uh, do I have the right impression that I like all the info from the website and from the events I attended? But is that really the thing for me? You can sign up for a Skype call with a student that's currently in the program. And then you can just have a chat with them, um, how they experience it. They can tell you about the, the exact content um, and what to expect. And we also have a recruitment partners in Indonesia, such as Atlas that's supporting us this weekend. Um, you can find the contact details also in the website or just send a chat um, today. And then you can, uh, they can support you in your, uh, yeah, for counseling and for um, applying with our university. With that, for the moment, I will thank you. Um, I have a video of our campus, but I think it's good to first uh, get into some questions. Thank you so far for your attention. Um, hi, Hannah. Um, I got a number of questions uh, which I could not answer directly. So I'm hey, going hey. to uh, ask them to you. So first of all, um, I got a question from uh, Monica. Uh, Monica is asking if she um, already got the letter of acceptance, but she did not get the fellowship yet. Can she defer the letter of exception to next year or should she reapply? As far as I know, you can defer. Um, might depend on the program. I'm not sure which program we talk about, if there's a numerous fixes program or another one. Um, yeah, but it's good to to yeah reach out to send an email uh, to let us know so um, then you can get exact information from our student services on what you might have to uh, yeah have to do again at what point to keep your place. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope that's clear, Monica. If not, please uh, post another question in the in the chat. Um, then I got a, uh, a question on the UTS scholarship. So there are two application deadlines. The first one has passed already. That was the 1st of February. And students are asking if they first need the letter of acceptance before they can apply for uh, the UTS scholarship. I would like to double check that with you. Yeah. Um... We'll double check myself to, to be fully sure, but I think. I suppose so, to be honest, but um, yeah, I was not 100% sure. You have to be provisionally admitted at least. So, okay. uh, yeah. And then if you want to swap from, for example, uh, communication sciences to uh, mechanical engineering, that will be very difficult, but you could perhaps do a pre-master, or is this basically impossible? Communication to mechanical, I would dare to say it's almost impossible. Um, the pre-master, I didn't explain that concept, maybe shortly as an introduction, what is a pre-master? Um, that's sort of an extra half year or a year before your master's to, um, yeah. Um, do some extra courses to be eligible. So you apply for a master and then the admission committee could decide like, well, you fit the profile, but you miss certain knowledge that we believe if you do some certain, uh, some extra courses, you will succeed in the master. So under the condition of succeeding then in a pre-master, um, you will get your spot. And it does enable students to maybe do slight changes. Um, but not from a social sciences to an hardcore in engineering master, let's say. So, um, yeah. Okay, that's clear. Then I got a question from uh, email asking um, um, if in OSIRIS um, all the requirements have to be uploaded within 40 business days. 
like documentation and so on. I did not know. Do you know? Um, I don't know about the 40 days. Um, well, there are certain deadlines until um, until when which uh, document has to be uploaded and Osiris should indicate those when you're in there. So if okay. it does indicate 40 days, uh, that's probably correct. Um, if you have difficulties to make it in the time that Osiris is indicating, please send an email. So then our student services or admission office is aware of your situation and then they can look into if there are options to, um, for example, upload some certain document later. Okay, then I have a question from Mayra. Mayra did her uh, bachelor studies in Japan and it was fully in English. Does she uh, again need to do an IELTS or a TOEFL? That uh, depends, I think, on your diploma. If it was from an international school, um, then it's most likely that you don't need an extra English test. Um, but I can uh, send a link to our admission page. I'm not fully aware how that is for uh, Japanese pre-education, and then it depends on your school. But it, it might be, it's worth looking into it, uh, so you might not need to do a test. Okay, then some new questions came in uh, while we were talking to each other. Uh, one from Shinta, she says, please advise, I have a bachelor in civil engineering, but I've worked two years in the banking industry. Would you suggest me taking a master for business administration or continue with civil engineering? Well, Shinta, my, my opinion, study what you like best. Do you want to continue in banking, finance, or do you want to continue in civil engineering? I think that's really difficult for um, Hannah and myself to answer. It's up to your personal interest and um, yeah, what do you want to do with your future career, I think. Anna, you have anything to yeah. add? I agree. I mean, first of all, it's like figuring out what you want. And I know that that's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. um, I think maybe what you can do to do that is like, look what kind of information options universities offer. If you have certain uh, universities that you're interested in, have a look at the website for events. Since COVID, all of us, of course, you noticed we're here also online. We all moved online. There are online open days, there are options, what I mentioned, to Skype with current students to get an impression of what do they want, why did they choose it, what do they want to do with it afterwards, and then you could try to figure out where you do you see yourself the most as well. Um, and also maybe looking if you consider a business administration master, um, also here have a look at the um, admission requirements. I can tell you from top of my mind if it's possible to actually enter a business administration master with a bachelor in civil engineering because I don't know in how far there have been business courses in your civil engineering bachelor so that yeah so in that sense um, I think it's a good way to start with like what do you want what also look at what's possible all right um let me see one more question from Linda uh, hello, I will graduate on May 20. Can I add my diploma after um, the 1st of May? Same for TOEFL. Um, I think you should already start, right? Your uh, application. Yeah, yeah. You should first start your application and everything in that you have. Uh, if there's something you don't have, hand in an explanation why not and when will it follow. Um, but also in individual cases, feel free to reach out to student services so they are aware already of your situation. I can put um, the email address in a moment in the chat. Um, as far as I'm aware, we need the English tests really before the deadline. But let's say you get the results a week later or so. Um, might be that if you upload the results, get in on that date, that that's fine as well. But I don't want to make promises at this at this point here. Um, how that's exact? Yeah, really done in detail, handled by admission office. Yeah, and then I got a lot of questions on uh, PhD scholarships. I will try to explain it. So there are two options to apply for a PhD. 
First of all, um, in the Netherlands, most of the times a, a PhD is a job. So you apply for a vacancy as listed in our uh, website. I've, I've posted the uh, link to our website a number of times. So just check if there is a position uh, that fits your profile and then apply to this position. There's also a second option. So for example, if you have a scholarship, so you have, for example, a um, LPDP scholarship, you can, of course, uh, contact uh, the professor and the program of interest directly and negotiate on a possible PhD within um, a certain program. But um, for example, for my own faculty, I've also posted a link in the, um, in the chat. Uh, I'm in the Faculty of Geoinformation Science and Earth Observation. There is a, a website and you just have to fill out uh, the forms, etc., and it goes to the professor directly. So um, let me see. So um, I believe Agus and um, Triad Moko posted this question, and in, in a second I will um, um, add the links to the to the chat again. All right. Um, Email, yeah, so the second deadline for UT UTS is indeed uh, the 1st of May. Um, and you do need the uh, LOA before applying to UTS. Um, what else? I think that's then... almost all scholarships needed, right? Yeah. That you need at least a conditional acceptance letter. So if you haven't finished your application yet, that's the first step to, to finish. Yeah. Then we got a question on uh, spatial engineering. Is it the same with urban design? Because I have a background bachelor in architecture. Uh, no, it's not the same. Um, it's not on um, urban design, uh, but there are different specializations in this program. Um, I will um paste the link to the program in the chat for you um, but with a background in architecture most likely you are eligible to participate in this uh, program and for this program there are also lpdp scholarships available um, are there more questions or did we answer all questions by now I don't think anything new came in. Oh, yeah, another one. Mutiara. Um, may I follow up if I have hold a master degree and would like to apply? Well, okay. So again, um, as, as explained by, by Hannah, if you really want to go from social science to engineering, it will be extremely difficult within the University of, uh, of Twente because you will simply lack the background. But if you want to go, for example, from uh, one type of engineering to another type of engineering, most likely you are eligible. And um, we suggest that you check with the program. You could do, for example, the e-check or contact the program directly. And then you can apply. If you have the, um, the, the LOA, you can apply for the UTS scholarship, but it's, it's, the deadline is 1st of May. Ah, and Hannah just um, put the uh, UTS requirements in the chat. Yeah, I think if you have had if you already have a master from our university, then you can't apply for the. So you you have to be new to the UT to be allowed to apply for the UTS. So if you already have pre-education from the UT, then uh, you're not eligible. But like to see the details and to like for yourself match it with your current profile, I put the link. Down. Okay, and I just put the spatial engineering in the chat. Are there 
there more questions? Housing. Um, for international students, uh, for the first year, um, we offer housing. So yeah. email for the first year, you do not really have to worry. So when you, um, as part of the application process, when you, um, once you have stated your financial means and your visa will be processed, then you will get um, an, an email by our housing office um, stating that you uh, can please create um, a profile in RoomSpot. RoomSpot is like the housing platform um, via which we handle, um, uh, handle those uh, special offers. And as a visa student, you will then receive one offer that's really dedicated to you. So no one else will be able to apply. You get, it, uh, you get this offer and if you accept it, then that's your room. If you decline and decide to rather look for something yourself, that's of course fine. You're not obliged to take it, um, but I highly recommend as it makes everything easier. You have a smooth start, you know where, go where you're gonna live. And then once you're here, you can still of course switch houses. If you prefer to live somewhere else, if you make friends with whom you want to move in together, so in that sense, uh, uh, that will be covered if you're a visa student. I will put a link here to our housing website so you can get a first impression, maybe see some pictures on uh, how it looks like. Um, Hannah, uh, Angela advises that we round off and continue the chat in the um, other website. Yeah. So I suggest that you um, show us the movie of the campus. Uh, oh yeah, that's and then we'll, uh, we'll move to the, uh, to the other platform. We will do that. I will also uh, quickly put one more link here to a visa, uh, to a video for how to apply for housing as visa student. So to the student who asked the last question. Uh, yeah. Okay. Then I will share the video. Yeah, thank you all for being there and um, yeah, after the movie, Anna and I will move to the other platform and we can uh, continue our, our question and answer, answer round over there. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank, thank you, Leanne. From a stranger to a friend, we'll come together, mm, together. We'll light up the powers in our minds. We're gonna light up, oh, we'll light up. The winds of change will roar, our spirits start to soar. The world is in our sights, a hundred thousand sparks ignite. The future's up to us, and every dream we touch. The world Design, they're gonna guide us, mm, guide us. They'll rise up, innovation will arise. They're gonna rise up, oh, they'll rise up. The winds of change will roar, our spirits start to soar. The world is in our sights, a hundred thousand sparks ignite. The future's up to us, and every dream we touch. The world is in our
Bye everyone, see you.